Hello everyone, it's me again, your favorite neighborhood pharmacist, and I am here for another exciting episode of Hail Facts. <laughs> you already know, I am so happy to be here today, and I have a super important topic to discuss with you guys. Don't worry, I am going to try to make this one brief. All right. As we all know, this pandemic has exposed many gaps in our healthcare system. Biggest one being the massive disparity in healthcare. Now, some of y'all are probably thinking I'm talking about America. Mm -mm -mm, not this time. <laughs> the health equity issue in America, quite evident, but I'm going to give America a break this one time. I have much bigger fish to fry. <laughs> I'm going to save our mess for another episode because there's a serious issue going on right now that needs to be addressed ASAP. And it's the health disparity facing the globe at this very moment. It makes me so sad to see what's going on in India and so many other countries because it's an issue that most public health organizations kind of saw come in, mainly because of the unequal distribution of wealth worldwide. Now, I'm not trying to blame anyone or any country for being wealthy. No, go get your money. All I'm saying is that we expected that the issue of unequal distribution of resources will arise amidst this pandemic simply because some countries are wealthier than others. Ergo, they have more access to resources. Most of the elite countries, aka first world countries so far, have um, had their first dibs on the vaccines for the novel COVID-19 virus because they've got the moolah. Perfectly understandable. Many other countries on the poverty spectrum, however, are getting next to nada. The, the World Health Organization, aka WHO, had predicted that there would be some challenges in getting vaccinations distributed fairly and equally to all parts of the world. So they initiated the COVAX program. <laughs> Sounds very fancy. They did this in partnership with Gavi, um, Global Alliance of, I'm trying to remember what it's called, Global Alliance of Vaccine or Global Vaccine Alliance. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, and um, they also partner with the European Commission and France to ensure that the low economic countries were not left behind in the distribution. How nice of them. Now, what is COVAX? COVAX is one of the integral parts of the ACT program, which basically means access to COVID-19 tools. It involves a collaboration between governments, um, global health organizations, manufacturers, scientists, etc. And the point is for them to provide equitable access to COVID-19 diagnostics, treatments, and vaccines once they're made available. Now, according to Gavi, the Global Vaccine Alliance, this will be achieved by acting as a platform that will support the research, development, and manufacturing for a wide range of COVID-19 vaccine candidates, and then negotiating the pricing. Now, all the countries involved, regardless of income levels, will have equal access to these vaccines once they've been developed. Sounds pretty simple and reasonable, but we all know that things don't go as expected. Well, we kind of do. Um, I say expected, but even I would know better than to trust that all the countries in this entire world are going to go with a plan like this. Come on. That's just asking a lot from them. And, you know, what did they do? What did these elite countries do? <laughs> they went on their own to have some side deals with manufacturers. Obviously, manufacturing companies are going to prop, you know, they're profit motivated. So they're going to be more inclined to go with the entity that offers them a better deal. They, they got to make the money. And I don't know much about business, but I would say in my experience, when it comes to bargaining, which being Nigerian, I've done a few times. <clears throat> but when you're trying to bargain for a merchandise with non-fixed prices, right? The person with a lower price offer has the weakest bargaining power, obviously. And they're most likely to walk away with little to nothing. Unfair? Yes, but c'est la vie. Now, 
I'm not trying to crap on any country in particular, but y'all know exactly who you are. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. It's so sad because COVAX is meant to be a lifeline for some countries since it's literally the only way that they'll probably have access to COVID-19 vaccines. But <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing because look at me pointing fingers on all these countries after being one of the first ones to get vaccinated. But in my defense, the vaccines were there and I didn't want them to go to waste. So I volunteered my arm as tribute. So you can't judge me. However, I would say there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with trying to meet the needs of your country if you can afford it. The real issue, however, arises when countries start to hoard these vaccines because they begin to have a supply that exceeds demand. And then these vaccines start to go to waste. Because remember, there are storage requirements for these vaccines and they do have an expiration date. So what we end up seeing are countries with vaccine shortages on one end, while other countries on the other end are wasting excess doses. Now, let me share some data with you so that you can fully understand this situation like what I'm talking about, because I'm just gapping over here, but I'm going to give you some facts so you understand what I'm talking about. As of May 9th of 2021, less than 10% of the world population has been vaccinated for COVID-19. 31% in the North America. 45% in the United States. Okay. 27% within the European Union and 52% in the UK. And from what I saw, UK, they're probably the most vaccinated of all the other countries. And then 13% in South America, 4% in Asia, and 1% in Africa. And these numbers are basically like population-wise, so 27% of the population if European Union have been vaccinated. So it's kind of crazy. Um, the second, these numbers are not giving you like the exact amount of people that are vaccinated in comparison to the rest of the world, but it kind of gives you an idea of like the amount of the population that have been vaccinated in comparison to the amount who haven't been vaccinated. And This is to tell you that the African population, only 1% of the African populations have been vaccinated for COVID-19. Part of the reason is because there's lower distribution of vaccines in African countries. I mean, some countries don't have access to vaccines. Some of them only have access to AstraZeneca. And um, I know that Pfizer, they're now um, allocating some vaccines to the COVAX program. Moderna just got approved for it. So hopefully by 2022, they will start. I know 2022, that's the estimate of when they're going to start allocating these vaccines to um, to all of these countries. So it's kind of crazy to see like how different the distribution is depending on, you know, what part of the world um, you're located in. And you know what? Let me let me ask you a question real quick and feel free to answer it if you like, you know, <laughs> to yourself. Um, but theoretically speaking, right? So let's say America, theoretically, America gets all the vaccines that they need to reach the percentage that they had um, estimated for herd immunity, right? And let's say they do reach herd immunity just in America. But say at this point, less than 50% of the entire world is vaccinated. And, you know, this is a theoretical situation. So I'm not trying to make jabs at anybody. But let's say America does reach herd immunity. Great. But are, are we really at herd immunity though? Because if you think about it, globalization is still a thing and um, international travels are still happening right at this moment. As a matter of fact, I went to the worldbank.org just to see the record of how many, um, how much traveling is going on. 1.9 billion departures were recorded in 2019 from country of residence to another country. And this is the amount of departure. So it doesn't, it's not specifically seen how many people are traveling, but it could be like one person traveling like a bajillion times. But either way, there's still a person leaving from their country to another country that's outside of their borders. So traveling does happen a lot. And you know what? I I think like, you know, as the pandemic has happened, obviously this number would go down, but 
I'm expecting that it will go back up. I mean, as we can see right now, traveling has started to pick back up. People are starting to go on vacations. And unless we decide to completely bar all international travels, I on which I honestly do not see that happening, but that's the only way that we would be able to like stop the spread of the virus across like borders. But that can't happen because that would be bad for the economy one and it will probably rub many people the wrong way. So now that I've put kind of put that out there, how does one country suffering from a pandemic have affect another country that's not suffering as badly? That's a question that you may ask. And I have a perfectly good example for you because you know what? I'm that nice. Okay. And this example is perfect because it's happening right at this moment. The situation in India, it has resulted in a lockdown, which has shut down many businesses. Some of these businesses include customer service centers for large corporations outside of India. And I'm talking big corporations that you may know of. And these corporations are now having to manage without a significant portion of their workforce. And you know what? I am curious to see how this would impact their economy as a whole. But the bottom line is we failed to see the importance of sharing our resources. And we're so focused on meeting our own needs that we failed to consider the needs of others. Being, and we've also failed to see like the importance of other human lives, not to mention that there were going to be some unintended consequences that would result from our actions or non-action. Now, I feel like I've been going on a long rant here, but <laughs> I'm sure some of you guys probably don't have a clue what I've been going on about. And you know what? I'm going to do a quick reset because I want to make sure that you guys understand what I mean when I'm talking about health equity. Now, in the world of public health, we throw this term around a lot, health equity. Now, what is health, he health equity? Now, according to CDC, this is how they describe it. Every person has the opportunity to attain his or her full health potential, and no one is disadvantaged from receiving or achieving this potential because of social position or socially determined circumstances. So it means we all have an equal chance of getting the health care that we need, basically. And you know what? That's such a nice concept. Too bad it's not. <laughs> it's not reality, unfortunately. But health equity does play a huge role in determining health outcomes because people from vulnerable communities lack access to quality care for a few reasons. It could be cost of care, lack of available services, or the absence of competent care. These are known as determinants of health because they determine the quality of a person's health they determine the burden of disease on that person, and they also determine the risk of an early death in some cases. Now, let me give you a good example. And note, this is a, this is an example, completely fictitious, not real, but it will give you a better understanding of this concept. Now, let's say Lance. Lance is a 45-year-old male who lives in the slums of India. He has a job that puts foot on the table, but barely has enough to pay rent or meet his personal needs. He gets by still. Lance has a lot of priorities in his life, but I can tell you his health, probably not one of them. Having health insurance plan is not an option, not to mention establishing with a local primary care doctor to have regular wellness appointments. That's also not an option. I'm sorry, what? Like, what local doctor? Where? Um, it obviously sounds like a no-brainer to, to anybody that, you know, it's important to have health insurance or health care providers or whatever. But to Lance, this is completely ridiculous. I mean, I can imagine Lance has many undiagnosed conditions, but he just pushes them aside because he cannot afford to be seen by a doctor. He barely has enough money for a bus ride to work. And even if he could afford it, the nearest clinic is probably more than 40 miles away from his home. Now, let's move all the way across the ocean to Terrence. Terrence is another 45-year-old male from Orange County, California. Terrence is considered upper middle class. He's got a great job, nice house, and a country club membership. 
Now, Ferris's neighborhood is in the center of the city with the best healthcare providers just within a four mile radius of his home. He has great insurance plan. He's been seen regularly by his um, primary care doctor and he has some chronic conditions, but they're being managed pretty well by his doctor. Now tell me, who do you think has a better chance of survival between Lance and Terrence? Now that my people is what we call health inequity. You're welcome. Now that you guys have become public health novices, you may now understand the role that health equity has to play in life expectancy worldwide. In addition, you may now understand why this is an issue with the vaccine rollouts. And if you don't, you know what? I really don't know what else to say to you. But I would like to switch to something more lighthearted. <laughs> now, I saw the most beautiful thing this morning, and I thought I'd share with the class. Now, Global Citizen created an event called Vax Life. It was basically a live concert that brought countries all over the world together in promoting equity in the distribution of COVID-19 vaccine. Now, the goal of this program was to raise awareness for, of the issue and also to raise funds for increased distribution of vaccines to vulnerable countries such as India. Now, this concert really, like, it really pulled on my heartstrings. I mean, I like almost cried watching it because I just, I just, <laughs> so I was thinking, I really wished I was a trillionaire or whatever. So I could just be like, you get a vaccine and you get a vaccine and everybody gets a vaccine. I mean, it was just really sad. And, but I would say it was so nice to see all these countries work together for a good cause such as this one. Now, if you have some time, you should definitely go check it out on YouTube. Also, if you're listening to this episode right now and you have questions about what you can do to help, you should definitely check up check out their website. It's globalcitizen.org. Now, I'm not affiliated with these people in any way, shape, or form. I wish they'd pay me for this, but no, I'm just kidding. I don't know anything about it. But I thought I'd share this case just in case anyone is interested. You know, if you wanted to get involved in some way, there's an opportunity for you. Now, I'm sorry, I said at the beginning that I was going to make this episode brief, totally lied, but I will leave you with some final words. Now, if you're still listening and you have no clue what the heck I've been talking about, here's one thing you should definitely take out of this. No matter where you're from, elite or not, we all are human beings and we all should care for each other. If we all can help it, no one should be left behind. And that's my two cents. <laughs> okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode because I had so much fun putting it all together. And as usual, I run out of things to say. So I'm going to let you guys go. And like I say on every single episode, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you haven't already. So you don't miss another episode. Also, leave a positive review and drop a comment. Let me know how you feel about this episode, what you'd like to hear about in future episodes. And if you'd like to, you can find some more information on my Instagram, my Facebook. It's called Health Facts, Facts spelled with the CX at the end. Or you can find my blogs at www.healthfacts.com. Same spelling. Send me a message or an email. Any topics you're interested in hearing about, just let me know. Before I let you go, I would like to say I have a huge announcement and I'm so excited. We're going to have our first guest on this show. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure, but I just wanted to let y'all know. So keep an eye out. I'm super excited for this. And that's all I have for you. Again, thank you guys for listening and I will see you next Wednesday. Hello everyone, it's me again, your favorite neighborhood pharmacist, and I am here for another exciting episode of Hail Facts. <laughs> you already know, I am so happy to be here today, and I have a super important topic to discuss with you guys. Don't worry, I am going to try to make this one brief. All right. As we all know, this pandemic has exposed many gaps in our health.